up next on Hudson Church. You cannot and you should not take one lesson that somebody gives and use that as your truth. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, for some of you, this is a historic day. Because I haven't been up here on a Sunday on this side uh, after the, 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 um, the worship team in a, in a long time. Uh, and it's been far too long, and you're going to be seeing me more regularly in Jesus' mighty name. So uh, I pray to the Lord that he gives me opportunities until we go to the, uh, with the rapture in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so today's message, I think it's an important message for all of us. And we can all do better. We can all learn from this message. What's the title, please, Nicole? Reconciliation. Everybody say that, please. Reconciliation. Say it again. Reconciliation. Say it again. You at home, say it right there. I hear you. Amen. Look at the Psalm 1 and say it to them. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Look at them and say reconciliation. Amen. Reconciliation is the name of the title today. Amen? So now, before we get into today's message, I have been teaching on the kingdom of God principles for several weeks. And this is important, Hudson uh, family, that we here at Hudson Church, this is a teaching ministry. And each lesson builds on the previous one. You cannot and you should not take one lesson that somebody uh, gives and use that as your truth. It is important that we learn to combine our lessons, to believe the lessons, Put the lessons to work in, in, in your lives, and then you will see good results or good success uh, putting the principles of God to work in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. How many want to have good success? There's something that's success. That's not good success. I mean, I'm talking about if you want good success, pay attention in Jesus' name. Here at Hutchins Church, we have, uh, uh, we're blessed where we have the library of all, all, all the apps of all the ministers. And you can go back and, and look at the messages because you just, maybe you miss, and that's why it's important to come to church. Don't miss because you're missing a brick. You're missing a, a two by four. You're missing a piece of plywood in the house that God is trying to build in your house because each lesson goes on top of another lesson. And then when you look at it overall, that's when you start learning and changing your lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Uh, so a quick review, and then we're going to get into today. We learned about love. Amen? And we've learned that that's the greatest power on earth. We've learned that God is love. Amen? And that God loves us with agape love. Agape love is unconditional love. Amen? And that God commands, not asks us, God commands us to love one another as he has loved us. Amen? This is review. And he also told us that if we do not love each other like this, we have no part in his kingdom. God calls us liars and that our hearts are far from him. Okay? The lips are near, but their hearts are far from me. So this is important for us in Jesus' name. Then we learned about mercy. And we learned that God is a merciful, merciful towards us because of Jesus. If it's because of me, he's got to strike me down right now in Jesus' name. But because of Jesus, he chooses to give me life and life in abundance. Amen? Only me is he going to strike you down also. Some of you are looking at me when I said that. What? We're your goody shoe show. <laughs> Amen? All of us deserve death. But because of Jesus, he, he gives us mercy. Amen? We've learned that God is rich in mercy. Amen? We've learned that God blesses us when we are merciful. Amen? And we've learned mercy is not to give the punishment what that a person deserves. When you give them and you let it go. Look at someone say, let it go. Look at someone and say, I let it go already. Have you let it go already? Have you let it go, you that are watching? Amen? So what does let it go mean? That you give up resentment. What does let it go mean? That you overlook an offense. That you overlook and not remember them. Like God, you need to throw your tra the transgressions or the offenses as far as east is from west. Question for us this morning. Are we doing this? 
Or are we keeping a record of the offenses that people have uh, committed against us? If we have a record, you know what we need to do? Burn that little book. Burn that little sheet of paper of those offenses that people have committed against us in Jesus' name. Amen? Just review, but I wanted us to see it with our own eyes. Psalms 103, verse 12. Let's all read. As far as east is from west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. God does this for us. We need to learn how to do this and put this in practice into our lives. Amen? We've also learned about the parable of the unforgiving servants. We learned that he owed $10 million, and he asked for forgiveness to his master, and his master forgave him all that great debt. Then immediately being forgiven, he found somebody that owed him 20 bucks, and he grabbed him, choked him, and threw him into prison. $10 million, 20 bucks, he grabbed him, choked him, and threw him into prison. You know what that is? A picture of you and me. When we have been forgiven so many things, how much have you been, how much has God forgiven you? Boy, the list that God has forgiven me, uh, I don't need a pickup truck, I need a tractor trailer, the double ones of the mess ups that I've done in my life. Some of you need a little a Yugo, a little uh, a mini car. No, I need a double tractor trailer load for all the mess ups that I have done in my life. Amen? So, so then, this is important. What happened to that person, who, that unforgiving servant? He was uh, turned over to the torturers. And the, the Bible said that we've learned that likewise he'll do to us if we don't forgive. And it's important for us to, let's look at this. A question for us, how do you want to be forgiven? I want to be forgiven immediately. And do you want to be forgiven for some things or for all things that you do? All things. Matthew 6.10. Let's all read. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread, 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, verse 13, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. A lot of us know that, a lot of us have to memorize, right? What about verse 14? You have this memorized? You know this? 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That's a good one right there, right? What about verse 15? But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen? Then we also saw two men going to the temple to pray. We saw that parable, the parable of the Pharisee and the, and the, uh, the parable of the Republican. I mean the publican. Not the one, the public in. Amen? Don't take it out. Okay? So, so one thought that he was righteous. He gave his resume. I do this, I do that, I do that. Not like this one. Not like that girl over there, right? And the other one just said, he couldn't even look. He just said, forgive me for I'm a, a, a sinner. Have mercy on me. The Bible says that he humbled himself under God. And that the second one was made righteous and looked right in God and not the first person. Amen? Be careful, Hudson Church, when you pull out your resume to God. God, you know what I did for you? You know how much I gave up for you? Uh, I say, oh, you for real? You know what I gave up for you? My son, my beloved son. Amen? Amen? So that's important, Hudson Church. Come on, that deserves a round of applause. He gave up Jesus for you. Amen? So today, now, Nicole, please, we're going to look at, do we have it? Reconciliation. All right? Each one of us, Hudson Church, have the ministry of reconciliation. Each one of us. This ministry comes before you're an apostle, before you're a prophet, before you're an evangelist, before you're a pastor, before you're a teacher, before you're a helps ministry worker, before you're an intercessor, you have the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? This is, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Word of God teaches us. This is a spiritual law, and this is a kingdom of God, truth or principle. This is important for all of us in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's look at this. Let's all read. Ready? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, then what? You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
How many like new things? I like new things. Some people like antique things and remodel things. Leave the remodel one. Give me the new one in Jesus' name. <laughs> The new and improved version, amen? But that's okay if you're an antique and you remodel things, this and that, amen? Verse 18. Now all, come on, let's all read. Now all things are of God, who has what? Reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given the pastor. He's given who? Are you part of us? He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. God, what's my ministry? I don't know what I'm doing. You got the ministry of reconciliation. I don't like that one. Give me another one. <laughs> you all got the ministry of reconciliation, every single one of us. Amen? Verse 19. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. What does that mean? Not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of what? Reconciliation. Amen. You should have been here when I taught this in Spanish. I had to, every time I had to say this word, I say, oh my God, I was garbling in uh, that word. But I thank God he gave me a chance to do it in English. Verse 20. Ready? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Look at the word, I'm pleading, I'm imploring you to, to put this ministry into effect in your life. Amen? Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin. For who? For me. Say for me. Forget about us. Say for me. Make it personal. He made it for me that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen, Hudson Church? This is everyone. This is the ministry of reconciliation. Colossians 1.19, New Living Translation. Let's all read, please. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. Are you pleased to live in Christ? Yes. Sometimes, on Sundays, you live in Christ. Friday night, who do you live in? Saturday night, where are you living? Uh -huh. But Sunday, I'm here with God. At least I'm here one day uh, a week, right? Live in Christ all the time. Dwell in him all the time. Amen? Verse 20. And through him, God did what? Reconciled what? Everything to himself. He made peace with what? Everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Hudson Church, I declare and I plead the blood of Jesus over all of your lives right now in Jesus. The blood of Jesus that cleanse all of us and throw that blood over me, my Father, because I need that in Jesus' name. Amen? I don't care what you think, I got the blood of Jesus that cleanse me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Verse 21. This includes who? You. Look at them. Say somebody, you. This includes you. Okay? This, look at someone else. This includes you. This includes you. This includes you. Amen? Who were once far away from God. You were his enemies. Do you know you were enemies of God? Okay? You were separated from him by what? By your evil thoughts and actions, Hudson Church. Verse 20, 22. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result... He has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Look at yourself that you have no fault in Jesus' name. Amen? You, you say that, I receive that. Who receives that? Say, I receive that. Amen. Receive that in Jesus' name. Amen? Look at some of them. Stop looking at me that way. You got to say, stop looking at me that way. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm free. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 23. Ready? But you must continue to believe this. Wait. You must continue. You know why? Because I forget. Because people remind me of what I did, right? So that you forget that you're cleaned. Amen? So let's, again, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it in Jesus' name. Amen? Pray, come on, give God a, a, God a clap offering. Now, what is reconciliation? Reconciliation is to bring back into relationship. We were separated, Hudson Church, 
You got separated. We are now reconciled through the blood of Jesus. Amen. We need to understand that God wants us together and not separated. God wants us together and not separated. Psalms 133, verse 1 through 3, amplified. Let's all read together, please. And look what happens here. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. How good and pleasant. I like that good and pleasant. Amen? Verse 2. It is like precious ointment poured on the head that ran down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest, that came down upon the collar and skirts of his garment, consecrating the whole body. Verse 3. It is like the dew of lofty Mount Hermon and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forevermore upon the high and the lowly. Hudson Church, the blessing dwells with this unity. And the blessing does not dwell with this disunity. This is important, Hudson Church. Colossians 3, verse 12. Ready? Are we learning something? Hey, let's keep on reading. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves. Hold on. Did he choose you? Tell somebody he chose me. Tell somebody he chose me. I don't know about you, but he chose me. I don't know about you, but he chose me. The Church TV app brings you live services direct to your smartphone, smart TV, and much more. You'll also get special announcements, streaming messages, and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Experience unlimited streaming through streaming platforms absolutely free. Visit your app store or download the Hudson Church app through PushPay. For more information, go to facebook.com forward slash the Hudson Church. Hey man, you better know that you're chosen. Not think, I don't know, maybe, no, I am chosen in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must close yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You, you still want to be chosen? You sure? Amen. Verse 13, I still want to be chosen. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you so you might forgive others. What does it say? You must, you must, you must forgive others. Amen? Four, 14, please. Above all, when the word says above all, what does it mean? It's above all. <laughs> no, don't think it's so spiritual. Above all means above all. Okay? In case, revelation. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, above all is above all, right? Close yourself with what? With love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Amen? Verse 15. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Verse 16. Amen? Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So the love of God will reconcile us and bind us all together in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is, uh, I, 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 this is important for us because sometimes, Hudson Church, uh, you have a prosperous pastor. And I have to say it because some of you don't know, and, uh, and, and I see some of you, my brothers and sisters, are tithing and sowing, and yet the manifestation does not manifest in your lives. And I want to show you one of the things that could be blocking your blessings. So he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 5, 21, TPT. Matthew 5, 21, TPT. You're familiar, let's all read, come on. You're familiar with this commandment toward, to those of old. Do not murder or you will be judged, right? 22. But I'm telling you, anger in your hearts towards a fellow believer. Wait, what does it say there? 
if you hold anger in your hearts towards a fellow believer, you are subject to judgment. And whoever demeans and insults a fellow believer is answerable to the congregation. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Don't go ahead of me. He's answerable to who? Let them know it's a lie. Okay, wow. Well, and whoever calls down curses upon a fellow believer is in danger of being sent to a fiery hell, okay? Verse, uh, verse 23. So then, if you are presenting a gift before the altar, and suddenly you remember a quarrel you have with who? With a fellow believer, verse 24. Leave your gift there in front of the altar and go at once to apologize to the one who is offended. Then after you have reconciled, come to the altar and present your gifts. So, let me see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise this. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at the other one. All that is blocking the seeds from coming into, the harvest from coming back into your lives. Get rid of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Get rid of that in Jesus' name. Now, just in case, because I know that we sometimes need a little bit more deeper, let's go to the message Bible. Matthew 5, 21. Look at this one. You're familiar with the command to the ancients, do not murder. Okay, verse 22. I'm telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty of murder. Carelessly call a brother idiot, and you just might find yourself hit, hold into. Have you ever called anybody an idiot? Please don't lie to me. Also, besides doing that, because <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> okay, okay. You that are watching also. Okay, or you've thought about it since you guys are so holier than now. Uh, okay. <laughs> Next one. Thoughtlessly yell stupid at a sister, and you are on the brink of hellfire. The simple moral fact is that words kill, Hudson Church. Our words do matter. Amen. Verse 23. This is how I want, come on, let's all read, come on. This is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. If you enter your place of worship and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you, 24, abandon your offering, leave immediately, go to this friend, and make things right. Then, and only then, come back and work things out with God. Okay? Now, wait, wait, it goes better, 25. Or say you're out of the street <laughs> and an old enemy accosts you. Don't lose a minute. Make the first move. What does it say? Make the first move. Make things right with him. After all, if you leave the first move to him, Knowing his track record, you're likely to end up in court and maybe even in jail. Don't wait for that other person because they might never come back to you. Okay, verse 26. If that happens, you won't get out without a stiff fine. Amen? Reconcil uh, the reconciliation ministry is to seek to restore a fallen brother and sister in the Lord. That's important. But don't say I have in the ministry of reconciliation and you don't see a brother for a while and you haven't called them up. Hey, what's up? I love you. I miss you. Is there anything I can do for you? That's our job, Hudson Church. That's what a family does or supposed to do. That's what God expects us to do in Jesus' name. Amen? Galatians, praise the Lord. Galatians 6, 1, TPT. Let's all read. My beloved friends, if you see a believer who is overtaken with a fault, the one who's in the spirit should seek to restore him in the spirit of what? Gentleness. But keep watch over your own heart so that you won't be tempted to exalt yourself over him. Verse 2. Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's troubles. Verse 3. If you think you are somebody too important to stoop down to help another when really you're not, you are living in deception. Verse 4. Let everyone be devoted to fulfill the work God has given them to do with excellence. And their joy will be in doing what's right and being themselves. And not in being affirmed by others. 
I need to be affirmed by God. And I know when I'm affirmed by God, God will take care of the rest in Jesus' name. Some of us look for the affirmation of people. There's going to be trouble because not everybody's going to affirm you. Amen? Verse 5. Every believer is ultimately responsible for his or her own conscience. Conscience. Okay, verse 6. And those who are taught in the word must share all good things with their teacher. Okay, now let's look at it from the message, uh, no, I'm sorry, the New Living Translation. Quickly, please. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Okay, verse 2. Share each other's burdens and this way obey the law of Christ. Verse 3. Please. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Verse 4. Pay careful attention to your own work, and then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourselves to anyone else. Verse 5. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Verse 6. Those who are taught the word of God should provide their teachers sharing all good things with them. Amen? Hudson Church, we must take the ministry of reconciliation into our hearts and take it seriously. Amen? We must also be careful on our daily walk not to cause offense to other people or to other believers. Okay? We must. Say must. must. I couldn't hear you. 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 Okay, treat each other with love. Treat each other with kindness. Treat each other with mercy. And treat each other with respect. Everyone, not just people that you like. Uh, I don't like that one. Okay, amen. We can offend somebody by accident. We can offend somebody on purpose. Either way, offense hurts people. I didn't mean to. You still hurt me, brother. You didn't hurt, so understand this. Offenses cause people to stumble and get off course with their walk with the Lord. Offenses cause people to stumble and get off course with their walk with God. Look what God says about offenses. Luke 17, verse 1. Luke 17, verse 1. That's what I'll read. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come. But whoa, to him through whom they do come. Say the word, whoa. whoa. I couldn't hear you, what? Whoa. I couldn't hear you, one more time. Whoa. Okay. This is the what? whoa church here. <laughs> Verse 2. Ready? It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and we were thrown into the sea then that he should offend one of these little ones. Verse 3. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Okay, verse 4. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, say, I repent, you might forgive him. Stop. Stop. Pastor, but I got to forgive him again? Yeah. That's the word of God says. But how long am I going to do this? I don't know, but that's what the word of God says. So are you in Christ or are you in the devil? We all said we're in Christ, right? Amen? So what is a millstone, Nicole? Just in case some of you don't know what that is. A millstone. Now, that's not, that looks like a lifesaver that Lewis gave me before. <laughs> like, uh, ah, you know, <laughs> it looks like that, right? It's not that, folks. The millstone is my size. The millstone is this big, and I'm not a little guy, so that's the size of a millstone. Okay, that millstone is used to crush olives. It has to have power uh, to press the juice out, out of olives, okay? So that picture, even though it's a good picture, like, thank you for Nicole. Let's give a round of applause to Nicole. For... <laughs> next time, give me a better picture. No, next time. Forgive me. I repent. I repent. I repent. Uh, and now look what he says will happen to you. Give me the next picture. Drowning with the millstone on your neck. Now, isn't drowning bad enough? Yeah. But drowning with a millstone around your neck, like, why is God saying this? 
because this is important, Hudson Church. This lesson is found in Matthew. This lesson is found in Mark. This lesson is found in Luke. Obviously, God does not want you to forget this lesson. Amen? When we hurt people, we allow the devil to enter uh, their lives and cause havoc. Okay? We are helping the devil to kill, steal, and destroy. This should not happen because of us. Be quick to apologize. Be quick to ask for forgiveness. And be quick to repent in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? My time is almost up. Are we learning something? Can I give you two more scriptures? No? So is it? Oh, good. Okay. When I go to a concert, they're pointing them. Encore, one more, one more, one more. Can I give you one, two more scriptures? Yeah. Proverbs 18, 19, Amplified. Let's all read. A brother offended is harder to be won over than a strong city, and their contentions separate them like the bars of a castle. Man, you don't want the hassles of the offense. You know why? It's not worth it. Because to, to make that up, it takes work. Hudson uh, Church. So this is important for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Uh, and then lastly, Hudson Church, it's to your glory to overlook an offense, though. It is to your glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 14, 21. Proverbs 14, 21. Let's go. Proverbs 14, 21. Please. Okay, ready. He will just... No, that's not the verse. Something happened. Um, Holy Spirit, help me. It's not that. That's not the verse. So, boom, erase that one. Let me see how I finish this. We need to, uh, I, I got to finish it with the last one. I'll get it next time. God gives me the, the, uh, the privilege to be up here. That it is to your glory to overlook an offense. And we must not be so easily offended. We have to overlook offenses. And it's important for us that sometimes we get offended because he didn't, he didn't look at me. He didn't say hello to me. He didn't invite me to his party. You know what? If you're not invited to a party, you saved on the gift. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I didn't have to go to the party. I saved the gift. Okay? And lastly, he didn't join my ministry. Ooh. I, I wanted him to help me in my ministry. It's not my calling, bro. I got to say, in my calling, in my lane, you have your calling, your lane, stay in your lane, I'm going to stay in my lane, and go where the Lord tells you to go, not where people want you to go, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We leave it with that. Did we learn something? Can we get a round of applause for the Lord?